Hi, today on my boot sedan build, I'm going to be building doors and fitting hinges. So I started by cutting uh, my doors to length, and as with all other surfaces in the project, I smoothed that off and just finishing off here with a card scraper. So there'll be very limited finishing later on. I'm just shooting the ends nice and square, get to exactly the right height for the doors and left the width slightly thick and I'll uh, trim that down with the plane once I fitted the the doors with the hinges and here I am actually finishing off the width to about a half a millimeter thicker than it wants to be or wider than it wants to be Now to um, mark out for the hinges, I screw on the hinge in the position I want it and uh, to do that you, you want to flip the back of the hinge uh, back past uh, about 270 degrees so it touches the side of the cabinet and push it up against the cabinet and then mark for the holes, put a couple of steel screws in don't want to use the brass ones yet because they'll you know, probably break off the first time you, you put the threads through then just use uh, a marking knife to mark carefully around the edges of where we need to mortise. And you see with these uh, T hinges uh, we also have to mark on the butt side because the, the butt's much shorter than the actual uh, flange. Now I'll just cut in next to where the butt goes with the dovetail saw down to depth. And then it becomes a case of uh, chopping with a, a chisel. And actually I'll change the width of the chisel to do the, the central section because that's wider. And then we can carefully remove all the waste material. Uh, pairing from where the hinge butt goes but also I'm finding this very brittle so I start off just cutting some knife walls in on the inside edge and uh, I'll work uh, to those then with something as brittle as this oak is uh, it's, it's very hard as well you have to press quite hard to do anything and then suddenly it'll let go so if I just uh, clean up on that knife wall first it'll help preserve the the far edge if anything goes wrong and then it's just working down to the right depth taking my time and uh, obviously these ends because they're narrow it's a bit like making a, a standard mortise really you just take a little bit at a time the depth is, is not very great so it's all pairing rather than uh, mortise chisel out and, and lots of hammering and then bring out the router plane just to get a nice flat bottom to the mortise power users might want to use a router for this but I'm only doing uh, four hinges so uh, it's not going to take me that long it should end up with a nice snug fit and nice and flush. Now this is a bit of reconstruction because I've uh, either didn't film or I can't find at least the footage for it. Just drilling holes in the doors to take the door pulls. And so it was extremely hard. Um, actually I probably should have used a uh, pillar drill rather than twist drill that I did use. But I wanted to keep it all uh, and work so I persevered these twin flute bits are pretty good actually they, uh, they remove the waste quite quickly so then it's brass screws for the door pulls and I've uh, I don't know if I showed it in the video but I pre-drilled the uh, the door pulls so I can go straight in with the brass screw nice and easy
Had I been doing the final finish on this boot sedan, then I would probably have fitted these uh, door pulls with dowels so that the inside of the door remained completely flush. But uh, as the client's doing the finishing, if I apply them with screws, then uh, she can remove them to get a, a much better finish. After I finished applying the door pulls, I uh, fitted the doors to the cabinet and with them attached I actually planed where they meet together in the middle for a nice, thin, consistent gap. Join me next time and I'll show you how I make little button latches like these to complete the build. Cheerio! If you like my videos, please share them with friends and on social media and check out my supporters page.